Join us now to break down the latest legislation on criminal justice reform and where we might go from here over the next couple of years. Josie Duffy Rice, a senior reporter at The Appeal and host of Justice in America podcast. Josie, welcome to The Damage Report. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, very glad to have you here, very excited to talk about these topics with you. Uh, we're gonna turn in a second to some of the recent legislation, but first, the Justice in America podcast. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we are, um, I'm, it's co-hosted by me and Clint Smith. And what we do is try to provide a primer for people who might be interested in criminal justice, know it's something that they should care about, you know, think that mass incarceration is a problem, but don't know how the system works. So um, we go issue by issue, we interview experts, and we also try to um, provide context for how the system is affecting certain communities, um, people of color, poor people, um, and how it really functions day to day. Uh, it's possible that you know I, I have to follow the news constantly because of my job. Maybe I'm in a bubble, but it seems like over the past few years, this has become a more salient and you know often talked about topic. You know, through the the, the efforts of movements like Black Lives Matters, the you know a number of different tragedies involving the police across the country over the past few years. Do you feel like people are paying more attention to this topic than they used to? I do. I feel like it is gaining traction. You know, when I um, first started really thinking about this stuff and working at the public defender's office 10 years ago, nobody knew what a prosecutor did. Nobody talked about this, or, or, or many, many fewer people talked about this. Um, that being said, you know, it's still really complicated and it's opaque in a way that's intentional. And so people, you know, know that there's a problem, but they're not always totally sure where the problem is, at what stages, exactly who you know is responsible for the problem, where the obstacles are. And so you want to be able to arm people, especially people in a democratic system where you know they're electing a lot of the people in charge of these systems. You want to be able to arm them with the tools to know who they're choosing and what decisions they should be making. And maybe this is an example of that, but I feel like this last cycle with organizations like Real Justice PAC and others sort of pushing like the idea that maybe we should pay attention to you know who is actually in these positions at the local level, not just paying attention to what the Department of Justice is doing. I feel like there might be a, a sort of growing awareness of how people can actually get involved. And so uh, your podcast seems like a great way for people to learn about that process as well. Yeah, I recommend it. But it is true that you know there are people, especially talking about prosecutors now, in a way that. Really matters. You know, you your local prosecutor has a ton of control over what happens to people in your jurisdiction, and most people don't even know who theirs is. So um, it's good to see kind of more attention being paid to that. And in this topic, uh, Congress recently paid more attention to it. Uh, not that long ago, we had the First Step Act that was passed. It was uh, bipartisan criminal justice uh, legislation, and the reception seemed pretty positive for the most part. Uh, as an expert in this area, how did you receive that law? You know, I think any move towards less incarceration um, is an, a really important thing, or, or, or better conditions um, for uh, people in in the system, better options for them to be able to get better treatment and also um, have opportunities at release. Um, I think there are things that are concerning about it. Uh, it falls short in a lot of ways. It doesn't involve sentencing reform, which really, really, really is critical. It um, relies on algorithms which can be biased and which have not yet proven themselves as worthwhile tools for which we should be making decisions about people's lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I think ultimately the, the overarching problem is just that it doesn't go far enough. We have a serious problem in this country. We have almost you know, two and a half million people in prison. We have 12 million people cycling through prison, um, jails every year. Um, that's a, a, an incredible amount of people. And without doing, going much further and much bolder, we're not gonna make the sort of dent we need to make to create a fair system. Um, and we're just not there yet. And of course, one concern is once Congress finally acts in an area, the worry can be that, oh, they'll feel like their job is done and they might not return to it for a year yeah. or five years or 10, unfortunately. Yeah, um, and I think it was so hard to get this much done. You know, it's a little, it's a little worrisome of how we're gonna get, get more done on the federal level. Now, uh, let, let's stay on the federal level. Uh, just in the past 24 hours, we had uh, William Barr uh, once again confirmed to be the Attorney General uh, of the United States. Um, you know, based on what you've, you, you know about him and the sort of context around, you know, what he might represent as AG, what do you think about the next couple of years of the Department of Justice and criminal justice uh, under William Barr? I, I don't feel great about it. Um, 
William Barr is not much different than his predecessor, Jeff Sessions, when it comes to these issues. Um, you know, he was a deputy attorney general in the early 90s, an attorney general in, in the early 90s, and pushed for more incarceration, more laws to, um, to more tough on crime legislation. You know, he wrote or he signed off in 1992 on a DOJ report called The Case for More Incarceration. And this is, of course, during our most, our most, carc- most increase incarceration um, decade that our country has ever seen. Um, He's denied the existence of racial disparities in the system. He's denied the existence of um, too harsh punishments. He has not seemed open to thinking about criminal justice reform as a way to not only improve the lives of people in the system, but improve the lives of all of us um, and really rethink the way that we consider punishment. Um, So I don't think, I wouldn't consider him an ally. Um, mm-hmm. I do think that this uh, there's always opportunity to talk to people and work with them to try to get some of this the change that we need to see um, implemented. But I think it's going to be a long slog. Yeah, especially when much of that description that you just gave could uh, apply to Jeff Sessions just as much as William Barr. So that should that should certainly scare people. Uh, we also. Uh, you, you were mentioning prosecutors and people's you know, awareness of prosecutors. I am curious, um, we, we have at least two, we might have more candidates for the Democratic nomination for the presidency who have previously worked as prosecutors. Um, based on what you know about, not, not necessarily those individuals, but people in that system, what do you think that that might bring to their candidacies? Obviously, people are concerned about what it might represent. You know, I, I think that um, it adds a layer of complication to people who um, want this job because being a prosecutor inevitably means making thousands of decisions um, over you know over a period of years about people's lives um, and and I think that a lot of those decisions um, could possibly raise cause for, for concern that being said I, I also think that um, one of the principles of the criminal justice reform kind of a movement is to talk about what it means to change and to um, reconsider what the decisions that you've made and to um, to look back and, and recognize when maybe you've made a mistake. My hope is that um, this op- offers actually an opportunity for us to talk about what how prosecution has changed, you know, how people's views have evolved, and um, what it means to have that kind of control over people's lives. So as long as it doesn't become just a singular benefit without criticism, I, I don't think it necessarily is an inhibit, you know, an inhibition to someone being a good president. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it requires a level of um, of reckoning. And I think that it's entirely possible with the number of Democratic debates we're going to have that we might possibly have that reckoning. Uh, Josie Duffy Rice, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you uh, lending your expertise to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.